This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 1831, Think Bigger to Motivate Yourself, by Tynan of Tynan.com, and I'm Justin Mollick. Welcome to Optimal Living Daily, or the OLD podcast, where I read to you from some of the best blogs I can find and get permission from, and sometimes books, covering personal development or self-help, minimalism, productivity, anything that I think will help make your life more meaningful. And with that, let's get right to it and start optimizing your life. Think Bigger to Motivate Yourself by Tynan of Tynan.com. I see a lot of people struggle with motivation, especially those who are already doing well. That represents a big loss of potential as those who have already achieved some level of success are demonstrably able to channel motivation into output. I have some ideas on why this happens and also how to combat it. While I think that it's important to be able to work with as little motivation as possible, there's no point in making things harder than they have to be. Working is easier and more enjoyable when we are properly motivated, so learning to motivate ourselves is a valuable skill. It is possible and maybe even preferable to be motivated by work itself. I wrote a whole post called Love Work about this many years ago. If you're not able to love your work and be motivated by it, you are definitely in the wrong field. However, all of us go through periods of time when our immediate tasks are not overly motivating. I spent the last two weeks totally rewriting code I had already written, which is really hard to get very excited about. Think of external motivation as the starter to your productivity engine. Work is usually most motivating when you're in the zone and in the middle of an interesting problem, but sometimes we need a push to get there. Over the past month, I've probably watched at least 50 reviews of yachts. Some of them border on being affordable, but the majority are one or two orders of magnitude more than I could afford. I share a small boat with a friend, and some of my most enjoyable times in the past year have been taking friends and family on the boat for one or two day trips. As I watched the yacht reviews, I imagined being able to take my friends and family on trips that spanned a week or maybe even a month, cruising around the coast of Europe or hopping islands in the Caribbean. Is it a waste of time for me to be spending hours per month watching reviews of yachts I couldn't possibly buy? I don't think so. Watching yacht videos makes me motivated. I know that the only way I could ever get one is if I work really hard and create a lot of value for a lot of people. I'll never be able to afford one on my current trajectory, so I must level up. It's important to want something you don't already have. It doesn't have to be a big fancy yacht. It could be a new knowledge, prestige, respect, the ability to donate a huge amount of money to a cause you care about, or anything else. Most people start out with wanting things like financial stability, a good living situation, and maybe a nest egg for security. Those are perfect goals, but once you achieve them, you have to find something new. Like so many things, what got you from point A to point B may not be the same thing that will get you to point C. There's the idea that wanting things is not good and that you should be satisfied with what you have. I think that this is half true. You shouldn't be merely satisfied with what you have, you should be ecstatic. Humans came into this world living in the wild, fighting for our lives. So anything above that, and even that really, we should be grateful for. If you never get anything else in life, you should be more than satisfied. However, that doesn't preclude us from wanting things. We humans have created so many cool things. I mean, seriously, just watch a yacht video. So why not be excited about those things? The best state to be in is to need nothing, be extremely happy with what you have, and still want a lot more. Isn't a yacht very materialistic? Sure. What I found best motivates me is sharing experiences with people close to me. I love showing people my favorite cities and even better hosting them there, teaching people cool things I've learned, or buying fixed assets that I can enjoy but also share with others. The best part of the island isn't going there by myself, but being able to share the experience of staying on a private island with others. It would be nice if my primary motivator was ending global poverty or something, and maybe those who are motivated most by that are better people than I am on balance. However, I'd rather figure out what actually motivates me so that I can use it to produce good work then try to convince myself I'm motivated by something more altruistic. It's just more effective and honest. It also doesn't really matter if you ever get the things you use to motivate yourself. They're just tools, and you'll change anyway. 
For years, I was so motivated to work because I wanted to buy an airplane, Mooney M20J or M20K, but then when I got to the point where I could reasonably consider it, I lost all interest. The point isn't to actually get the things, it's to gain the ability to get them. I think people feel bad about dreaming big these days. Wealth inequality is certainly too high, but rather than aspire to make it to the top and raise the floor for everyone else, we sometimes demonize those at the top, which isn't to say that some don't deserve it. Love work for its own sake, appreciate what you already have, and don't become such a workaholic that you miss out on the joy of life. But also, think big. What would be worth working really hard for? What would get you out of bed in the morning, eager to work? You don't have to share your motivation publicly or even be proud of it. First find it, then channel it into great work, and then on the side, think about what it is you want and examine the underpinnings of the desire. You just listened to the post titled, Think Bigger to Motivate Yourself by Tynan of Tynan.com. I'll have some comments, but first, if you're a business owner, you don't need me to tell you that running a business is tough, but you might be making it harder on yourself than necessary. Don't let QuickBooks and spreadsheets slow you down anymore. It's time to upgrade to NetSuite. Stop paying for multiple systems that don't give you the information you need when you need it. Ditch the spreadsheets and all the old software you've outgrown. Now is the time to upgrade to NetSuite by Oracle, the world's number one cloud business system. NetSuite gives you visibility and control over your financials, HR, inventory, e-commerce, and more, everything you need, all in one place instantaneously. Whether you're doing a million or hundreds of millions in revenue, save time and money with NetSuite. Join the over 22,000 companies using NetSuite right now. Let NetSuite show you how they'll benefit your business with a free product tour at netsuite.com slash old. Schedule your free product tour right now at netsuite.com slash old, netsuite.com slash old. And thank you to tie in. Like yesterday, another post asking us to rethink our work if we don't love it, or at least if we aren't motivated by it and can't imagine spending 90,000 hours of our lives there, as Joshua Becker pointed out yesterday. But the focus of the article takes an interesting perspective. We hear a lot about minimalism here. In fact, yesterday talked about minimalism. And Tynan lives pretty minimally, but he talked about how that drive of wanting something can really work in your favor. So ridding yourself of wants might not be the best solution for you. Or maybe it is. That's the fun of this podcast. You get to find out what works best for you. I think my drive personally is mostly internal. So it's sort of a never-ending quest hoping that more people find this podcast helpful. But for you, that could be different. Maybe temporarily it is to get to the point of buying a yacht or something else. And like Tynan said, maybe by the time you get there, it will have changed and that's okay. Not just okay, but great because you achieved what you set out to do. But your priorities changed and now you can use that result to get something else or give or invest, whatever you like. But the point he made is that it's okay to want and to want big. So something to think about today. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you for being here and listening to me and for subscribing to the show. And I'll be back tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.